posibleng tanong na maaaring lumabas ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination ang aling ko sa inyo for today. 15 board exam type of questions with rationalization that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos once a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, nurses, let's jump into the video. Hello, nurses! Isang panibagong nursing lecture nga ang alay ko sa inyo for today. Nagbabalik na naman ako para sa isang panibagong linggo ng nursing discussion. And before we further proceed, gusto ko lang kayong kumustahin. Ano bang mga lagay ng buhay nyo, ng puso nyo dyan? <laughs> I hope wherever you are right now, whatever time zone you're watching me right now, I wish you good health. I wish you good morning, good afternoon, and good night just in case I don't get to see you. Isang panibagong nursing lecture nga ang alay ko sa inyo for today because alam ko na nalalapit na naman ang nursing board exam. And for today's video, isang panibagong nursing test banking ang alay ko sa inyo. Another 15 sets of questions with rationalization that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. PNLE 1. Na kung nito mga nakarang linggo, hindi nyo nga natatanong, panay panay nga ang pag-upload ko ng mga P na, PNLE nursing type of questions with rationalization. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung video natin last week at itong mga nakaraang linggo, ililink ko yung actual playlist dito. I-click mo yon and make sure that you take the test and let me know about your score. Alright, so uh, medyo mahaba nga po itong video discussion na to. Hindi ko na patatagalin pa. In order for me to do that, let me switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, okie dokie. Hi everyone, welcome back to our formal discussion on the foundation of professional nursing practice PNLE one. Yes, this is another topic or entry natin sa ating nursing test banking. Nako panay panay nang linggo linggo nang ako naga upload na mga nursing test banking video kasi naman alam ko na marami sa inyo ang talaga namang gusto ng gusto itong content nato and you guys are actually I know that this is one one way for you to prepare for the actual board exam. Alam ko sa May na de ba for this year so sa mga May takers sa mga uh, ano, first, um, tama ba, June or May uh, test takers natin dyan. Good luck sa inyo guys and makakasa kayo sa mga, sa mga susunod na linggo kasi nga every week nga po ako nag-upload is dadagdagan natin tong mga entry natin sa nursing test banking para naman pagdating ng araw ng board exam you can easily nail it. Alright? So hindi ko na patatagalin pa eto na talaga. Let me share to you our objectives for today. So just like what we do previously every time that we're doing test banking videos I will going to provide and discuss board exam type of questions and then our second intention for this video is I'm going to provide you the rationalization for each board exam type of question. Now, if there's something, I keep on saying this, I feel like a serang plaka because I keep on saying this every single video, but this is really the intention. Whenever we do a nursing test banking video, you guys, I want you to understand that the main intention and the main focus of this one is for you to really have the full grasp of the rationalization. It doesn't matter how low or how high your score is, but I want you to really understand like to the core what is the rationalization per each question because uh, so that when the time comes that you will you can get to encounter the same question kasi sa board exam sa lahat ng klase ng type ng exam you guys na uulit lang yung tanong minsan naiiba lang na yung structure pero same lang yung thought same lang yung hinahanap sa yo so once na may encounter mo sila and you are 100% sure and you are familiarized you familiarized yourself you did a good job in making sure that you are aware about the rationalization then you can easily nail it you guys i trust in you i believe in you okay so that is our objectives okay 
So let me share to you our instructions for today's exam. So you will be given 15 board exam type of questions. I will be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck, nurses. Okay? Okay, sige. Pag, 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 pag na mga las masagidli. Oh, hinga, 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 hinga. Inom lang tubig. By the way, I want you to take this as if you're taking the actual board. Okay? That's a challenge. You guys ready? Here we go. Board exam type of question number one. Nurse Betty is assessing a tactile or assessing tactile frematis. Familiar ba kayo sa concept ng tactile frematis? Of course. In a client with pneumonia for this examination, Nurse Betty should use the... So ano dong gagamitin mo sa paggagawa o sa pag kapag i-execute mo na yung tactile frameters, which is an, uh, one way of nursing assessment. Is it A, fingertips? Is it B, finger pads? Is it C, dorsal surface of the hand? Or D, ulnar surface of the hand? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good, you guys. Taas sa ang kamay na mga nakatama o tama. Ulnar surface of the hand, letter D. The surface of the hand nga po, the ulnar surface of the hand is the right answer. Why? The nurse uses the ulnar surface or ball of the hand to assess tactile frameters, the rails, and vocal vibrations through the chest wall. The fingertips and finger pads best distinguish texture and shape. The dorsal surface best feels warmth. Hence, the answer is letter D. Sino nakatama dito? Handa na ba kayo mag-proceed? Okay, board exam type of question number two. Which type of evaluation occurs continuously throughout the teaching and learning process? Tinatanong ka, types of nursing evaluation. Add by. Alin daw dito? Definition of terms to you, nurses. Huwag malilito, huwag kakabahan. Okay. Up continuously or occurs continuously throughout the teaching and learning process. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya nasa-stop. Tuloy-tuloy siya. Is it A, uh, summative or summative, B, informative, D, uh, C, formative, or D, restro, uh, retrospective? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Nurses, what is the answer? Letter C, formative. Very good. Formative or concurrent, that's the other term, evaluation occurs continuously throughout the teaching and learning process. One benefit is that the nurse can adjust teaching um, strategies as necessary to enhance learning. Summative or retrospective evaluation occurs at the conclusion of the teaching and learning session. Informative is not a type of evaluation. Hence, the answer is letter C, formative. Gets yon na gets. Next, board exam type of question number three. A 45-year-old client has no family history of breast cancer or other risk factors for this disease. Nurse John should instruct her to have or her to have mammogram how often? Okay, so ito ang situation, you guys. Meron tayong 45-year-old female client. Walang breast CA history sa family. Walang risk factor na ganun. So, as a nurse, kung ikaw si nurse dyan, ganun mo daw kadalas i-a-advise ang mammogram sa isang, for, sa isang pasyente na ganito yung kaso. How often? Frequency. Is it A, twice per year? B, once per year? C, every two years? Or D, once to establish? Once to establish baseline. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Very good. Letter B is the answer. Once per year. Here's the reason why. Yearly mammogram should begin at age 40, regardless, and continue for as long as the woman is in good health. If health risks such as family history, genetic tendency, or past breast cancer exist, more frequent examinations may be necessary. Hence, the answer is letter B. Kasi well, ano naman to? Well, mammogram. Well, check up lang to. So, uh, once per year. Pag, pero pag may, may mga risks or mga such as um, hereditary factors, mm, you can do it uh, more often in a year. Okay? All right, board exam type of question and number four. Nako, my arterial blood gas says, nurse says, listen, a male client has the following arterial blood gas values, pH of 
partial pressure of oxygen of 98 millimeters of mercury, par uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide 50 millimeters of mercury, and bicarbonate of 26 max per liters based on these values, Nurse Patricia should expect which condition. So, tinatanong ka kung ito yung value mo, tinatanong mo yung pH mo 7.3, acid or alkalosis. Yung partial pressure of oxygen mo 98. So, ito, itong guide na to is, um, no, uh, tadito, um, value lang yan, pero I suggest na when you're talking about arterial blood gases, you should know the normal values. So, in this question, base sa mga numerical values mo dito, what is is the answer is it a respiratory acidosis is it b respiratory alkalosis c metabolic acidosis or d metabolic alkalosis your five seconds starts now Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? It is letter A, very good. Respiratory acidosis. Is the, um, here is the reason why. The client is below normal of acidic or blood pH value, the best 7.3. Blood pH value and above normal partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide, yung PCO2, tingnan mo, um, 89. Indicating respiratory acidosis. Um, in respiratory alkalosis, the pH value is above normal and in the and in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide value is below normal. And metabolic acidosis nurses, the pH and bicarbonate values are below normal. In metabolic alkalosis, the pH and um, uh, bicarbonate values are above normal. Medyo nahilo ba kayo doon? Okay, mag sa mga susunod. We're gonna talk about your... Um, uh, metabolic and respiratory acidosis and alkalosis in a deeper, um, a deeper discussion or deep, uh, deeper dive sa mga arterial blood gases mo, okay? But the answer to this one is letter A. Sino nakatama doon? Very good. Proceed na tayo. Board exam type of question number five. Nurse Len refers, uh, refers a female client with terminal cancer to a local hospice. Pag sinabing hospice, mga terminally ill patients, okay? What is the le uh, What is the goal? of this referral. Kapag daw ang kliyente mo, ito yung tanong, kapag ang client mo, yung pasyente mo, ay nirefer na sa hospice, anong goal mo? Anong intention? Is it A, to help the client find appropriate treatment options? Is it B, to provide support for the client and the family in coping with terminal illness? C, to ensure that the client gets counseling regarding health care costs? Or D, to teach the client and family about cancer and its treatment? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Nako, bonus question na lang to sa inyo. Ha? Letter B. Very good. To provide support for the client and family in coping with terminal illness. So, mapapansin nyo sa tanong o doon sa body na tanong may terminal. And it's actually reflecting on the choice here on the letter B cho option. Terminal illness. Yung mga clue eh, kadalasan sa board exam. So, to provide uh, support for the client and family in coping with terminal illness. That is the right answer. Why? Hospices provide supportive care for terminally ill clients and their families. Hospice care doesn't focus on counseling regarding health care costs. Most clients referred to hospices have been treated for their disease without success and will receive only palliative care in the hospice. Uh, when you think about hospice care or hospice facility, I want you to remember the term palliative care, supportive treatment. So these are the patients who are possibly DNR na lang, uh, may DNR status na, and you're just trying to make them, um, you know, um, elevate the symptoms and the pain especially. So that is the reason why letter B is the answer. Let's proceed, board exam type of question number six. When caring for a male client with 3CM stage one pressure ulcer on the coccyx, which of the following action can, can the nurse institute independently? So, tinatanong ka dito, independent nursing intervention mo sa pasyente merong stage one pressure ulcer saan sa coccyx? Is it a, what are you gonna do? Is it a, 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 a massaging the area with an astringent every two hours? Talaga ba? Is it B, applying an antibiotic cream to the area three times per day? Is it C, using normal saline solution to clean the ulcer and applying a protective dressing as necessary? Or D, using a povidone iodine wash on the ulceration three times per day? Your five seconds starts now. Wound care ito ha.
Time's up, you guys. Nako, sino nakatama? Sino mga wound care champion natin dyan? The answer is letter C. Using normal saline solution to clean the ulcer and applying a protective dressing as necessary. Washing the area with normal saline solution and applying a protective dressing are within the nurse's realm of interventions and will protect the area. Using a povidone iodine wash and an antibiotic cream require a physician's order. Anong tinatanong? Independent nursing intervention or action mo. Of course, when you're gonna apply antibiotic cream and when you're gonna apply povidone iodine, depende sa protocol ng hospital nyo, you might need a prescription from the physician. This question particularly is asking for your independent nursing action. Hence, the answer is letter C. Massage with an astringent can further damage the skin. You're not gonna do that, okay? So the answer is letter C. Nako, nakaharami na ba kayo? Um, ilang questions na lang ba? I think nine questions left, so make this one count, okay? So proceed na tayo. Board exam type of question and number seven. Nurse Oliver must apply an elastic bandage to a client's ankle and cuff. He should... Apply the bandage beginning at the clients. So, application ng bandage. Saan mo daw siya ilalagay? Kapag ang, kapag ang, tawag dito, kapag ang, ang injured part mo is ankle and cuff. Saan mo siya ilalagay? Is it a knee? Beginning. Saan ka magsisimula? Are you gonna start at a letter A, knee? B, ankle? C, lower th uh, thigh? Or D, foot? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good, very good. Letter, oops, letter D, foot. Here's the reason why. An elastic bandage should be applied uh, form uh, from the distal area to the proximal area. So distal to proximal. This method promotes venous return. In this case, the nurse should begin applying the bandage at the client's foot, beginning at the ankle, lower thigh, or knee, does not promote venous return. So the answer lang, you guys, pinaka essence nito is yung promotion of venous return. Hence, you will start from the foot. Malino yon, malino. Board exam type of question number eight. A 10-year-old child with type 1 diabetes develops diabetic ketoacidosis, that is your case, and receives a continuous insulin infusion, which condition represents the greatest risk to this child. Alin daw yung greatest risk sa isang pasyente ng nagdevelop ng diabetic ketoacidosis. Nako meron po akong discussion ng iyong uh, DKA, ha? diabetic ketoacidosis, nasa under na medical surgical nursing playlist yon. Kung di po pa napapanood yon, panoorin mo siya kasama ng ibang mga um, references and guides, study guide mo sa med surge. So, going back to the question, is it letter A, hypernatremia? Or B, hypokalemia. C, hyperphosphatemia. Or D, hypercalcemia. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is your answer? Letter B, hypokalemia. Hypokal. Insulin administration causes glucose and potassium to move into the cells, causing hypokalemia. Kaya pag ongoing ang insulin infusion mo sa isang pasyenteng DKA, ano papa order ng doktor from time to time? Normally, may Q6 na uh, na order yan to check the what the potassium level of your patient. Importante rin na check mo yung vital signs, baka naman nag aritmia na yung pasyente mo. Kaya normal values and also uh, compliance sa ating, normal values ng yung vital signs and also compliance doon sa ating mga laboratories is important when treating or patient, whenever the patient is uh, on to insulin infusion. Alright? So, nagets yon nagets Okay, number 9. Board exam type of question number 9. Nurse Len is administering sublingual nitroglycerin. Nitrostat is the brand. To the newly admitted client. Immediately afterward, the client may experience. So, tinatanong ka, ano ang onset or initial side effects ng iyong sublingual nitroglycerin? Is it A, throbbing headache or dizziness? Is it B, nervousness or paresthesia? Is it re, uh, C, sorry, drowsiness or uh, blurred vision? Or D, tinnitus or diplopia? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. All right, so letter A is the answer. 
So actually, the, this question is asking you for the normal side effect na mararanasan ng pasyente mo um, immediately after or who is commencing um, nitroglycerin therapy. So B is the answer. Throbbing headache or dizziness. Headache and dizziness, you guys, often occur when nitroglycerin is taken at the beginning of the therapy. However, the client usually develops tolerance. Okay? So uh, nursing health teachings mo sa mga pasyente ganon, you can expect um, headache on the first time or first few moments that you are taking this nitroglycerin, especially when he's not or that patient is really not into that type of medication okay so proceed na tayo board exam type of question and number 10 nurse michelle hears the alarm sound on the telemetry monitor the nurse quickly looks at the monitor and notes that the client is in ventricular tachycardia the nurse rushes to the client's room upon reaching the client's bedside the nurse would take which action first initial nursing intervention mo sa pasyente mong nagventricular tachycardia that is the question Okay, so what is the first thing that you would do? Is it A, prepare the cardioversion or prepare the client for cardioversion? B, prepare for defibrillate the client. Defibrillation agad? Is it C, call a code or D, check the client's level of consciousness? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. What is the answer? It is letter D. Very good. Assessment nga po. Assessment pa rin tayo. A D is the answer. Check the client's level of consciousness. Determining the unresponsiveness is the first step assessment action to take. When a client is in ventricular tachycardia, there is a significant decrease in cardiac output. However, checking the unresponsiveness ensures whether the client is affected by the decreased cardiac output. So what are the things that you can use or tools that you can use to check the level of consciousness? Pwede kang gumamit ng AVPU or pwede kang gumamit ng GCS. High score mo sa iyong GCS or Glasgow Comma Scale, which I cre actually created a deep dive or discussion regarding that is 15. All right, so avpu, yung alert, verbal, uh, pain, and then unresponsive. All right, so those are the tools that you can use to check for level of consciousness. And also, if you're going to prioritize this question, you guys, you can, you can see in the way you're going to approach um, this type of questions, especially in the board exam, you will, you will start with your um, ABCs and then um, Maslow's and then ADPI. Okay, so level of consciousness is which, uh, which is under your um, um, ABC, uh, not really ABCs, but it is actually under your ADPI assessment. Assessment pa rin tayo. Prepare, prepare for cardioversion, that's more of like intervention. Prepare for defib, yun agad. Call a code, mm -mm. check the client's level of consciousness is the right answer. Malino yon, malino. Last five questions na tayo, you guys. Make this one count. Board exam type of question number 11. Nurse Hazel is preparing to ambulate a client, a female client. The best and the safest position for the nurse is assisting the client or in assisting the client is to stand. Saan ka daw tatayo? Kapag, the, kapag ikaw ay mag assist ng pasyente mong, um, um, uh, first time to ambulate. All right. It, this could be uh, post op or something. But where are you gonna position yourself to promote safety, client safety? Is it a on the unaffected side of the client? Is it b on the affected side of the client? C in front of the client or d behind the client? Your five seconds starts now. Miba sa board din atanong din to kusa ng katatayo girl. Okay, what is the answer? Very good, you guys. Letter B, on the affected side of the client. Listen to this, you guys. Here's the reason why. When walking with clients, the nurse should stand on the affected side and grasp the security belt in the mid-spine area of the small of the back. Um, the nurse should position the free hand in the shoulder area so that the client can pull toward the nurse in the event that there is a forward fall. The client is instructed to look up and outward rather than at his or her foot. Hence, the answer is letter B. All right, last four questions na. Board exam type of question number 12. Nurse Jana is monitoring the ongoing care given to the potential organ donor who has been diagnosed with brain death. Brenda, the nurse determines that the standard of care had been maintained if which of the following data is observed. 
Okay, ang sitwasyon mo dito sa tanong, ganito ka magdadaisek ha. You have um, organ donor, um, uh, you have a patient with diagnosed with brain death. How are you going to determine that um, the standard of care or meaning um, the right and appropriate interventions and treatment to the patient has been given? Is it A, urine output of 45 ml per hour, B, capillary refill of 5 seconds, or C, serum pH of 7.32, or D, blood pressure of 90 over 48 millimeters of mercury? 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. Kung medyo mahaba yung mabilis yung 5 seconds, you can just actually pause it and just think through it, okay? I don't mind. So, your five, the, the answer to this question is number 12 is letter A, urine output of 45 ml per hour. Why? Adequate perfusion must be ma maintained to all vital organs in order for the client to remain visible as an organ donor. A urine output of 45 ml per hour indicates adequate renal perfusion. Low blood pressure and delayed capillary refill time are circulatory system indicators of inadequate perfusion. A serum pH of 7.32 is acidotic acid which adversely affects all body tissues hence the answer is letter a board exam type of question number 13 nurse amy has an order to obtain a uh, blah, 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 urinalysis from a male client with an indwelling urinary catheter nakafolis catheter pala ito. the nurse avoids which of the following which contaminate the specimen so tinatanong ka fundamentals of nursing paano ka magkukulik ng urine specimen sa isang pasyente naka fc Foley scat, that is the question. Is it A, are you going to wipe the port with an alcohol swab before inserting the syringe? B, aspirating a sample from the port of uh, port on the drainage bag? C, clamping the tubing of the drainage bag? Or D, obtaining the specimen from the urinary drainage bag? Sasapokin ko kayo, your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. Nako, nako, nako. Ito na tayo. Proper collection of a specimen. The answer is letter D. Obtaining the specimen from the urinary drainage a bag. Why? Um, a urine specimen is not taken from the urinary drainage bag. Urine undergoes chemical changes while sitting in the bag and does not necessarily reflect the current client status. In addition, it may become contaminated with bacteria from opening the system. Hence, the answer is letter D. All right, last two questions. Tika lang, hihinga lang ako. Nakakarami na ba kayo? Very good, very good. That's what we want. But apart from that, I want you to really understand the rationalization, okay? All right, so board exam type of question number 14. Nurse Mary Death is in the process of giving a client a bed bath. In the middle of the procedure, the unit secretary calls the nurse on the intercom to to tell the nurse that there is an emergency phone call. The appropriate nursing action is to. So, ganito ang sitwasyon, ha? Explain ko, baka sakali na guluhan kayo, okay? Si Mary Dete nagpapaligo ng pasyente. Okay? E biglang merong, yung secretary daw, tumawag sa kanya at merong emergency phone call. Kung ikaw si Mary Dete at nasa kagaligit na ang ka ng pagpo-full bath sa pasyente, ano ang gagawin mo? Okay, so naka, ano ka na, naka, nandun ka sa pasyente, nakatiwang-wang na yung pasyente mo doon, eh meron ka emergency phone call, what are you gonna do? That is the question. Okay, are you gonna immediately walk out of the client's room and answer the phone call? That's letter A. B, cover the client, place the call light within reach and answer the phone call. C, finish the bed bath before answering the phone call. Or D, leave the client's door open to the client uh, so the client can be monitored and the nurse can answer the phone call. Your five seconds starts now. Grabe sa board, no, tinatanong ko yung mga decision-making skills mo. O, ito na tayo. Sino nakatama dito? Very good letter, B. Cover the client, place the call light within reach, and answer the phone call. Because telephone call is an emergency. That's the situation. The nurse may need to answer it. The other appropriate action is to ask another nurse to accept the call. However, is not this is not one of the options. To maintain privacy and safety, the nurse covers the client and places the call light within the reach or within the client's reach. Additionally, the client's door should be closed 
or the room curtains pulled around the bathing area to promote patient privacy. So the answer is letter B. Nako, bago ko i-reveal yung ating last questions, nakakasunod ba? Nakasunod ba tayo? Impedihan ko lang kayo ulit. Kung hindi nyo pa, hindi pa kayo nagpapas, nagsusubscribe, magsubscribe na kayo pang pabuenas ngayong 2022. Okay? Alright, very good. Board exam type of question. Number 15. Make this one count, you guys. Last question for this video. Nurse Jan is collecting a sputum specimen for a culture and sensitivity testing from a client who has a productive cough. Nurse Jana plans to implement which intervention to obtain the specimen? So, specimen collection and amount of fundamentals of nursing skills, okay? So, kung ikaw si Jana at magkakalik ka ng sputum specimen for CS, culture and sensitivity. Um sputum for uh, to, to check for the sputum what is um, the right intervention uh, to do to uh, to collect the specimen is it a ask the client to expectorate a small amount of sputum into the messes basin b ask the client to obtain the specimen after breakfast c use a sterile plastic container for obtaining the specimen or d provide tissues for expectoration and obtaining the specimen nako sasapukin ko kayo your 5 seconds starts now Time is oh, excited. Ako. Time is up, you guys. The answer to this one is letter C. Very good. Nako, very, very simple. Hindi nyo na kailangan paligululiguyin na sarili nyo. Kung ano yung pinaka simpleng tano, sagot, you guys. Use a sterile plastic container for obtaining the specimen. Here's the reason why. Sputum specimens for culture and sensitivity testing need to be obtained using sterile techniques. Period. Because the test is done to determine the presence of organisms. If the procedure for obtaining the specimen is not sterile at all, then the specimen is not sterile. Then the specimen would be contaminated and results for the test would be invalid. False positive result ang mangyayari kapag hindi mo tamang inano. Wait lang. Alright. Okay. So, nakuha nyo ba yun? So, use the plastic container for obtaining the specimen. Otherwise, the result will be, uh, the, it will create a false positive result sa kliyente mo. Baka mamaya magamutan nyo. Wala naman talagang bakteriya. O, di ba? Binigyan ng antibiotic. Ayaw mo nun, you guys. Okay. So, malino ba yun? Malino. Yun na nga. Natatapos na. Diyan na nga natatapos ang ating discussion for today. I hope na you guys actually learned something out from this video. And I really, I really want you guys to um, prepare as much as you can on the upcoming boards. This is, this is really my way of helping you guys. Kasi nung naghahanda ako ng board exam, naku, hirap na hirap ako humanap ng mga review materials. Kaya na okay, mag because I got you guys. I got you, okay? Kaya naman, gusto ko ulit magpasalamat sa inyo. Thank you so much you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe ka na sa channel ko for more nursing education on videos. And also to watch out for my other contents let me know if you have other nursing topics other videos that you want us to do comment it down below abangan nyo nga po yung mga nursing lectures and nursing materials review materials na gagawin natin sa mga susu sa susunod na linggo pakilagay nga po ang score nyo sa baba because i would love to to um you guys to i mean to to know to evaluate the scores of my students gonna go through ba ng matiwasay and gusto ko rin kayong anayahan na please follow my Facebook page it's Neil Galve I'll be putting all the links to my social media accounts on the description box okay so I'll see you again next time you guys you have a good one Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you learned something. Help me grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kulta. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box down there or simply click this icon button wherever, whenever it pops out, okay? Let's connect. Follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I would also like to invite you to please subscribe and follow my Facebook page. It's Neil Gavi. The link is also on the description box. I'll see you again next week, okay? You have a good one.